Tusk 21, Tusk 22, radio check. 21, copy you, Lima Charlie. Hey, go ahead and drop the canopy for me so you can hear me a little bit better. It's going to be the uh, silver switch near the bottom right corner of the front dash. Let me know when you have that down and locked. Okay, sir. Canopy is down and locked. Alright, man. Let's either go with one lead or my call sign Biff while we're in the pit. Cool? No more of that sir shit. Copy that, sir. Shit. Shit. One. Copy that one. Alright, now that that is out of the way, I know you have some time in the Alpha, and you've been through the Sim and Dash 1 for the Charlie. But we're going to go through this step by step just to be safe. I do expect you to know all this already, but it's still worth going over. Copy. No problem. Alright, it's very important that everything happens in sequence. So don't do anything until I tell you to, and don't do anything out of order, cool? Yeah, of course. So today's sortie is going to be short and sweet. We're going to go over startup, taxi, takeoff, landing, and shutdown together. I'm going to act as flight lead, even though I'm going to be following you around. So I'm going to handle all communications and clearances through ATC for the flight. Copy? Um, okay. Anything I should be aware of or know leading us around Vegas? Just stick to the flight plan and everything will be cool. Roger that. Alright, I'm going to pick up the checklist after the pre-flight and cockpit inspections. We're going to be in the prior to engine start section. After I give you a few commands, let me know when you've accomplished those instructions and we'll move on. Rog? All right, obviously our uniform radio battery and inverter are up, so we're going to move over to the left console. There you're going to find the radar altimeter. Set that switch into the NRM, or normal position. That switch is going to be located just behind the throttles. While we're over there, we're also going to move the main boost pump switches into the main position, and the wing boost pumps into the wing position. Those switches can be found on the panel just ahead of the throttles and up again. Dash. Let me know when you have all of that done. Set. Awesome. Now moving up near the top left corner of the heads up display, on the canopy framing, you will find the accelerometer. I need you to press and hold the accelerometer reset button found in the bottom left corner to zero out our G. Next, on the right console, locate the electrical panel and set both AC generator switches to the power position. Set. Alright, now onto the CDU, which is behind the electrical panel. I need you to verify that the page select rotary knob is in other and the steer point knob is set to mission. Since we're over there, also go ahead and set your oxygen supply lever to on and your navigation lights into the flash position. I forgot to mention, but on the left throttle, you need to put the pinky switch into the aft position. That way, all of your exterior lights are working. Okay, all that is done. Cool. Now we need to check out all of our caution lights. So back on the left console, just ahead of the SAS panel, you're going to find two buttons. One of those is going to be labeled Signal Lights Lamp Test, and the other one is going to be Fire Detect Bleed Air Leak Test. So let's go ahead, press and hold the Fire Detect Bleed Air Leak Test one. While we're holding that, we're going to scan the dash, looking at the fire handles, making sure they illuminate. And on the master caution panel, we should see bleed air leak flashing with the audible tone coming through the headset. Okay, that's good. Great. Now I need you to verify for me that you show three green landing gear lights next to the lollipop or landing gear handle. Three green. 
green. Alright, moving on. Uh, I need you to locate that signal light test button. It's going to be next to the button that you just pressed. Here, we're going to hold it down and look over a little bit more of the cockpit this time as we have it held down. So go ahead and do that. And first, we need to look at the emergency flight control panel, which is going to be next to your radio stack. There, we're going to verify that the aileron and elevator emergency disengage flight function. Moving forward, we're going to go to the staff panel and verify that we can either take off the trim, light is illuminated as well. And going forward from that, we're going to look at the lollipop or landing gear handle to make sure it's lit up red. We're going to look up on the dash to see if master caution, steering engaged, marker beacon, and canopy unlock indicators all light up. And lastly, we're going to have a look over on the right console at the caution panel. There we need to verify that all of the lights function properly, and again, we're looking for that audible warning tone through our headset. Stand by. Okay, that's all good. Outstanding. Alright, moving over to the fuel quantity and hydraulic indicator panel. Here is where we're going to test our fuel quantity. The first thing that we need to do is check the totalizer, which is the digital numbers. You should see 11,000 pounds of fuel. Is that what you are seeing? Hey, firm. Cool. Let's now press and hold the test indicator button, which you will find to the right of the large fuel display selector knob. Go ahead and do that now. All right, you should see each needle drop to somewhere around 3,000 pounds. The needles are allowed to be off 300 pounds, either above or below that 3,000 pound target. The totalizer should read 6,000 pounds, and it needs to be within 400 pounds, plus or minus. So let me know once you have that done, and if it's good. Okay, we're good there. Right on. Um, all right, go ahead and move the fuel display selector knob into the main and wing positions, taking note of each displayed quantity as you cycle it. You should see something close to 7,000 pounds in the main and about 4,000 pounds in the wing tanks, and that should add up to your 11,000 pounds of total internal fuel. Yep, that all checks out. Perfect. Go ahead and cycle that knob for me back into the internal position. Alright, now moving back to the environmental system panel, we need to check out our oxygen. So go ahead and verify for me that you have a good supply of LOX, which we should have the full 5 liters indicated by the analog gauge. A firm 5 liters. Alright, now go ahead press and hold the test button, which you're going to find to the right of the gauge. The needle should slowly begin to fall, and once it reaches one half liter, we should hear the master caution tone and see oxy low flash on the caution panel. Let me know once that has been accomplished. Check. So as a roll of thumb, anytime we're above Angels 10, we're going to have the mask on. Also, if we're going to be maneuvering around, we'll don the mask for that as well. Now, if we're just cruising below 10,000 feet, feel free to drop it. I know a lot of people give us shit, bust our balls, saying we don't fly high enough to need locks. But with today's missions like COIN and the environments that we operate in, we have to fly pretty high sometimes. At least for a hog. Raj, I think I heard that before. Seems like some things never change. Alright, so here we'd normally call ground to get our startup clearance before we fired up the APU. I went ahead and gave him a call before we stepped and let them know we'll be higher on the ramp doing some academics. So we just need to give them a call before we start the motors. But for now, let's get the APU up. So what I need you to do is flip the APU switch next to the throttle into the start position. As the APU comes online, I need you to monitor the APU instruments on the front dash. So let me know once the APU is up and everything's good. Copy.
good start. Alright, I right, verify that the left fuel pressure light is not lit on the caution panel. And since you're over there, go ahead and move the APU generator switch from the off reset position into the on position now. Done. Right on. Uh, on to the CDU panel. So here we need to set the CDU and Iggy switches into their respective on position. Okay, both in the on position. Alright, so here we're going to deviate from the checklist just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and get our Victor and Fox radio spun up. Now we need to do this so that you and I can still talk, but we can monitor the ground frequency at the same time. So on your Victor radio panel, which you're going to find located right behind the throttles, go ahead and move the frequency mode dial, or the far right dial, from the off into the TR position, and also set the frequency to 126.5. And stand by for the radio check. Set. Task 2 2 radio check, Victor. One, two copies, you Lima Charlie. Right on. Moving on to the Fox radio, which is the furthest aft in the radio stack. Go ahead and put the frequency mode dial into the TR position as well. Set frequency for 33.000 and again, wait for the radio check. Set. Test 2-2, radio check on Fox. One, two, has you, five by five. Vichin, we'll use Fox for our interflight from this point forward today and for all of our future flights. Copy. All right, back on the uniform radio, let's go ahead and dial into 270.1. That is the frequency for Nellis Aidus. Here we're going to get the most current weather and remarks before we call ground for startup. If you need help with the format, go to the reference card from the briefing and we'll break it down piece by piece. Once you've got it all figured out, let me know and we can go from there. Oh, one more thing that may be useful in the future whenever you work with different radios. On the left console, just below the emergency flight control panel, you're going to find the intercom control panel. Here you can set the volume of all navigation and radio systems. If you're expecting a lot of radio traffic, it might be a good idea to reduce the volume of some of them. In this case, you're going to have an Aegis message repeated over and over again. So after you note down the important parts, you can either change the UHF freak or just reduce its volume, okay? Copy. Nellis AFB Information Hotel, time 2055. Wind 200406. Visibility greater than 10 miles. Broken 5,000 feet. Temperature 43. Dew point 37. Altimeter 2995. Runways and use 031031. Alright, I've got the ATS info. Approach. Acknowledge receipt. Alright, according to ATIS, what is the current bulletin ID letter? Hotel. That's exactly correct. So now we're going to give Nellis clearance delivery a call and get our IFR clearance. That's going to be on 289er.4. Get that punched in and using the Fox radio, let me know when you're standing by on that free. Two's up on 289.4. We get our IFR clearance from them for every sortie that we fly. Again, I'll handle it this time, but in the future, when you're flying as lead, you'll get the clearance. Stand by for the call. Clearance, Tusk 2. Tusk 2, go ahead for clearance. Good morning, Tusk 2 is going to be IFR to MOPA. Tusk 2, clearance, cleared to MOPA via the TAC North Department. 
departure is final. Proceed direct to MOPA after passing Apex. Climb and maintain Angels 5. Departure on 385.4. Squawk 4010. Clearance, Tusk 2 is cleared to MOPA via attack north departure. Direct to MOPA after Apex. Climb and maintain Angels 5. Departure on 385.4. Squawk 4010. Tusk 2, read back correct. Contact ground on 275.8. Good day. Contact ground on 275.8 for Tusk 2. See you there. Awesome, we're now ready for startup. So, to go ground at 275.8 and use the Fox radio, please let me know once you're there. up on 275.8. Okay, just stand by and monitor that frequency. North ground, test 2 flight is 28 at Thunder, ready for startup with hotel. One is up and good. Alright, so now we need to cycle the flight controls. Um, we're going to look for free and correct movement. Uh, so go ahead and move your ailerons, elevators, and rudders. If that's good, go ahead and start your number two engine in the same way you did as number one, and let me know when you have a good start. Copy, stand by.
both engines are up. Alright, so going back to the oxygen stuff on the environmental panel, uh, we're going to make sure that the emergency and diluter levels are in their normal positions. Supply lever is on and the flow indicator is working. All that is good. Okay, here in the checklist is where we normally get the radios on the set, but we've already done that. So the next thing to do is going to get the IFF into standby. If you have followed your checklist before we got the uniform radio up, you should have already got the IFF panel set. But just to be sure, we're going to go all over it together. Roger, standing by. So, on the IFF panel, just outboard and behind the throttles, place the code dial into Alpha. Next, move the mode 3 and mode Z switches into their forward on position. As we set our mode 3 code as 4010, as this is what we are going to be squawking today. Okay, alpha set. Mode C on and 4010 is dialed up. Okay, that should cover what should have been set up beforehand. Um, oh, aside from moving the IFF antenna switch into the both position, you'll find that as the furthest left rear switch on the left console. Um, now getting back to where we were in before taxi, uh, move the master mode dial into the standby position. Okay, stand by set. So we're going to go ahead and move on to making sure that the crossfeed switch is in the off position. We'll find the crossfeed switch on the fuel system control panel. Set. And just to the left of that, we're going to make sure that the emergency brake handle is in the full forward position. Check. Going back onto the right console, you will find the ILS and TACAN control panel. Set your TACAN mode selector switch to TR and turn the ILS on by moving the left bezel into the power position. Also set your TACAN for 12 X-ray and dial into 109.10 on the ILS. Okay, all set. Alright, so you're probably getting an annoying beeping sound coming through your helmet, so go ahead and turn the volume down for both the TAC-IN and ILS. Done. Okay, so now we need to check signal lights one more time, just like we did before, looking for all the bright flashing lights and the noise coming through the helmet. After we're done with that, we're going to cycle the flaps through their full range of movement. First, we'll drop them one notch down into the takeoff position, then we will go full down. After they stop moving, we'll bring them all the way back in. Lamps and flaps are good. We're now going to test the speed brake emergency retract. There are several things that need to happen either at the same time or very close together. So to make this a little bit easier, I will explain the whole process first, then we will go through it step by step. How does that sound? Copy. Sounds great. Again, this is just going to be a quick description as to what we're going to do, so don't press any buttons right now. So the first step is going to be locating the speed brake emergency retract switch on the yellow and black outlined emergency flight control panel. On that panel in the upper left corner, you will find that switch. What you're going to do is hold open the speed brake switch on the throttle in the open position. 
As the boards are opening, you are going to throw that switch forward into the speed brake emergency retract position while still holding the open command on the throttle. Okay, while still holding the switch open, you should see the speed brakes stop in their movement. Uh, you're going to release the switch on the throttle and try to close them. They should not move. At that time, return the emergency retract switch into its original unmarked position and slightly close the speed brakes. Uh, after you slightly close them, you're going to fully open them. While they are fully open, cycle the ailerons while checking for free and correct movement. That's all good. Fully close the speed brake and check for proper hydraulic pressure. Easy peasy, right? I think so. Okay, it's hold open the throttle speed brake switch and flip the emergency retract, which should stop them. Try to close them, which shouldn't work, and return the emergency retract switch. Then slightly close and full open on the boards. Check for movement, then close and check hydro pressure. Right? That's it, man. Uh, so go ahead and give it a shot this time while I read you through it. Sound good? Yep. Ready to proceed. Okay, here we go. While commanding open on the speed brakes, flip the emergency retract switch into the emergency retract position. While still holding open, verify that the boards have stopped in their movement. Now try and close them. Again, they should not move. Check. No movement. Alright, now we turn the emergency retract switch into its original unmarked position. Slightly close the speed brakes, then stop them. Now go ahead and fully open the speed brakes. And once they are fully open, cycle the ailerons looking for free and correct movement. And after you've done that, fully close the boards, do a quick check of the control surface movement, and have a look at your hydraulic pressure to make sure it's good, and that's it. Okay, everything worked as designed and pressures are good, I think. Normal pressure is anywhere between 2800 and 3350 PSI, correct? and does things like automatically coordinates turns and provides pitch compensation for speed brake deployment and precision attitude control. So we're going to first turn on the anti-skid and engage the four SAS channel switches near the throttle. Do that now, please. Okay, anti-skid on and SAS switches in the up position. Cool, so here we're going to move the monitor test switch found just underneath the four channel switches towards the left. When we do this, we should see the four staff switches get kicked back into their off position. Re-engage all four channels and push the switch to the right, again looking for staff to get kicked off again. Let's go ahead and do that now. Alright, both left and right are disengaged on all channels. Perfect, re-engage the four channels and leave them there. Next, go ahead and depress the off trim button on the SAS panel until you see the light come on just above it. This of course indicates that your trim is neutralized. Okay, set. Alright, going back to the front dash underneath of the left MFCDE we'll find the AHCP, also known as the Armament Hood Control Panel. Here we need to put the IPC switch into test and the RS and kick you switches both into their respective on positions. Also, we're going to turn on both MFCDs, and eventually these will default to the DTS upload page. Once that page is pulled up on either MFCD, we're going to press OSB 10 labeled load all, and this will start the DTS upload process. Stand by one.
Okay, I just pressed load all. Okay, once you have pressed load all, you will see the asterisks next to everything disappear. Um, 15 seconds or thereabouts later, they will all reappear. This indicates that the DTC was successfully uploaded onto the jet. Copy. Okay, I see the asterisks are back, so the DTC is loaded. Now once that is done, we're going to press OSB 12 on the left, MFCD should be labeled STAT, and we're going to go through that and check for MFL. Okay, done. Cool, on the uh, left MFCD, press OSB 15 to bring up the TAD, and on the right MFCD, press OSB 13 to bring up the Repeater. Okay, done. Right on. The uh, INS alignment should now be finished, so if you would verify that you see 4.00.8 on the CDU towards the bottom next to where it says T equals. You should also see INS nav ready flashing at the top. Hey, firm. Okay, on the CDU, depress the right line select 3 key for nav, then when you have done that, place the steer point rotary dial into the flight plan setting. Then on the nav mode select panel ahead of the joystick, press the Iggy button and verify the steer point button is illuminated as well. Alright, set. Okay, on most sorties, here is where we would get the TGP and our countermeasures set up, but since we're not going to be using either of those today, we'll just move on and we will check our flight instruments. So we're going to start this by first turning the large gray knob in the lower right corner of our ADI. While turning that knob, we are going to check the ADI for movement. After we are done with that, we're going to Align the arrow on the knob with the reference mark on the ADI. That's good. Okay, next uh, we're going to uncage the standby attitude indicator by cranking the knob in the lower right until we see the flag snow. We will then align the aircraft symbol to the horizon and it should be good. After you've done that, please verify that the vertical velocity and airspeed indicators both read zero. Good. Alright, next we're going to run the bit on the UFC. So, using the UFC, push the enter button and let it do its thing. Providing you have no grounding bit faults, let me know when you're ready and we will proceed to the next step. Copy, stand by. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. Alright, the bit is finished and we're good. Sweet, go ahead and move the IFC switch into the on position at this time, please. Check. Alright, now set your altimeter for or two niner niner five and first turn off the APU generator then the APU done okay now we need to do the idle core RPM check to do this we are going to rapidly advance the throttles and return them back to idle again you're going to do this very quickly we will need to go from idle to mill in back to idle like boom boom boom. As we do this though, you need to verify that we do not exceed 70% for either motor. Also while you're doing this, make sure you hold the 
brakes so the aircraft doesn't roll or jump out of the chalk. Both motors are good. Right on. Uh, put the EAC switch behind the throttles into the arm position, please. Armed. Okay, so next we're going to set up the saddle for situational awareness data link. So on the left MSCD, on the tad page, we're going to press OSB 10, which should be labeled net. On the right hand side of that page, we should see two blocks one own and the other group. Today we're going to use a group ID of 07, and I will take 01 for my own ID while you take 03 for your own ID. So on the UFC, I need you to type 03 for your own ID and press OSB 7 to input the 03 that you just typed into the correct spot. Alright, saddle is set. Okay, so I just your aircraft symbol on my tad go from green to blue, indicating that you are now part of my group. Um, we'll go over that and all things tad on a different sortie, just not today. Copy that. Okay, back up on the UFC, um, press the function key followed by the number zero, and that should get you into the CDU steer point info page. Once you've done that, we should be good to roll. Let me know when you're ready for taxi. Set and ready for taxi. Copy, stand by for taxi clearance. Two. Ground, Tusk 2, taxi 2 a with hotel from Thunder to 03 to the right. Tusk 2, Nellis, ground, taxi Charlie, Golf and Alpha, hold short 03 right. Clear, Charlie, Golf, Alpha, hold short 03 right, Tusk 2 1. Okay, press the peaky switch on the control column to activate your nose wheel steering. Also verify you see that illuminated on the front dash. After that, you'll need to advance the throttle slightly to get rolling, and once you're moving, don't forget to quickly apply and check the brakes. I'm going to follow you out to the active, take a left turn out of the shocks, and just follow the ramp. Just keep your taxi speed around 10 knots while we're on thunder. Two. Oh, I forgot, but also switch your nav lights to steady and set your taxi landing lights into the taxi position. Two, taxi out. Alright, as you can see, Nellis is pretty busy and Thunder is a tight ram. You're going to want to really watch out around here for people, jammers, trucks, bobtails, trailers, cars, and bread vans like this guy off to the right. Raj? Yeah, those bread vans are especially bad. Air guys are always in a hurry, picking up and dropping off people, plus the expediters are going spot to spot checking on things. Just keep an eye out for them. Welcome. Alright, we're coming up to the taxiway leading us out of Thunder. This is going to be taxiway Charlie. Follow it off to the left and continue straight. Two. 
When we taxi, we want to keep it around 15 knots, but certainly under 20. The nifty way we can check our ground speed is to press OSB 10 twice on the CDU page. Here you're going to see it switch from indicated airspeed to ground speed. Now to get it back to indicated, we simply hit OSB 10 once more. Very nice. Okay, off to our left, you're going to see the bomber pads and the revet. This is where they'll park bombers when they're TDY here, and they'll park aircraft loaded with lives in the revet. I think the last time I was here, they had shades over the revets. Yeah, they got blown over a few years back. I was here for that. It must have been like uh, 1700, and you've seen this wall of dust heading this way from the west. It's like something you see over in the shit. I hit the base and knocked it over. We had a few A-10s under there and some Vipers loaded with 120s and 9s. They're here for a special half-cap mission. Damn, did anything bad happen? Well, there was some damage to the Hogs, the Vipers, and their missiles, but DOD came out and nothing went off. I think there may have been a few injuries to the maintenance guys and some equipment was damaged, but nothing much more. They just took the shade down and never put another one in. Oh, okay. Okay, we're approaching Alpha, so get ready to turn right. Prepare to hold short for the runway until I can get us takeoff clearance. Two copies. Let me give ground a call and do contact tower at 327.70. Contact tower at 327.70. Us two. Before you either of us enter the active, we need to quickly go through the before. 
for takeoff check. First, take a look at your engine instruments and make sure everything is good and in the green. Next, set your flaps for takeoff, verify your speed brakes are closed, put the IFF into the normal position, and verify the takeoff trim is set. Engine set, flaps good, not uh, engines good and flaps set. <laughs> Alright, verify that your oxygen is still good, canopy is down and locked, arm the rocket chair, turn on the strobe lights and verify we are seeing indicated airspeed on the CDU. Good, set and showing indicated airspeed. Cool, go ahead take the active, line up on the center line and we'll run through the lineup checks. Know when you're ready to press. Two. Twos, lined up and holding. So first thing you're going to do is check your flight instruments. After that, check anti-skid, verify it's on. Pedo heat on. APU and APU generator off. Still with me? Yep, good so far. So you may have noticed that we're taking off with the wind. I know this is probably pretty odd for you, but here at Nellis, it's not too unusual to land and take off away from the city, providing the winds ain't too bad. Now, we do this because of the noise and to reduce the risk of flying all those aircraft and even live munitions over a very heavily populated areas. Okay, let me get us takeoff clearance and we'll proceed with the next step. Stand by one. Two. Nellis, tower, Tusk 2, holding. Zero three right and ready for departure. Plus two Nellis Tower, wind two zero two at six. Runway three right, cleared for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, zero three right, plus two. All right, so we're now cleared for takeoff. We're going to run the motors up to ninety percent on the core RPM and hold them there for a bit. Check and make sure that everything's in the green and we have nothing lit on the caution panel. If everything's good, release the brakes and then advance the full throttle. Disable the nose roll steering when you have rudder authority by hitting the pinky switch again on the control column. Copy, stand by. Two's rolling. Okay, you have to take off fly runway heading and climb to 5,000 feet.
kind of weird. Some spots are just dirt and rocks, and then you drive 20 minutes in a car and there's some amazing scenery. Yep, just like any place that helps to know the area and what's out there to see and do. Since we're going to be here for a while in Nellis, I'll point out some of the nifty stuff as we fly around the area.
We're coming up to Mofa, so let's start a level left hand turn and head back to Nellis for recovery. Copy. We'll just shoot a straight in approach for today, so don't worry about any fancy overhead brakes or anything like that. Sound okay? Yeah, should be fine. Alright, I'm going to contact departure so we can get our freak change to approach. Stand by one. Copy. Departure test 2 is southwest of MOFA, is turning inbound for landing. Test 2, copy. Contact approach at 291725. Approach at 291725 for test 2. Alright, go ahead and get that punched in and start monitoring.
fly over it, we are 10 miles from runway 21. So for today, from here, I'm going to have you start a descent into Nellis and get set up for landing. So start down to pattern altitude, which is 3,400 feet MSL, and we're going to be looking for 180 knots indicated. As you do that, I'm going to pick up an orbit here. Descending to 3,400 and looking for 180 indicated. Solid copy. Go ahead and drop the gear in the flaps. If you would confirm that you're showing three gear down and locked, if you wouldn't mind, please. Two's got three green. Test two, contact hours, three two seven point seven zero. Good day. Tusk two two, switching to tower. Go ahead and pop over to tower three. If you need anything, hit me up on Fox. Dallas Tower, Tusk 22 is an A10, 5 miles out on vinyl for runway 21 left. Tusk 22, Dallas Tower, clear to land 21 left, winds are 202 at 6, check gear down. Clear to land 21 left, Tusk 22. Okay, one last time, go through the pit and make sure everything's okay, and that the jet is configured for landing. Go ahead, fly the approach, and try not to bend anything while you're at it. Raj, thanks for the encouragement. Altitude, altitude.
2, safe on deck. Just stay on the active until you're at the end of the runway. That's going to be taxiway alpha. Pull off a little bit and hold there. And
contact. Plus two, vacate when able, contact ground when clear of the active. Clear active when able and contact ground, Tusk two. Okay, let's head over to ground on 275.8. Ground test your flight clear of the active, looking for taxi back to Thunder.
Stay under the ramp, stay to the left, and head towards the last spot. Just be careful of your wingtip clearance as it's a bit tight. Copy. Staying left and pulling in the last spot. Yep, we'll go through shutdown once you're stopped. Copy. Alright, one, ready for shutdown. Cool, looks like Chief has installed your chalk so you can go ahead and release the brakes. Turn the IFF off, and next we're going to cage the standby attitude indicator by pulling the knob out and turning it at the same time. You should see the flag reappear and stay there when you release that knob. Next we'll go to the AHCP and verify the following. Master arm safe, gun pack safe, and laser arm safe. We're going to look for the TTP to be turned off. You with me so far? Yep, I'm still tracking. Okay, still on the AHCP. Uh, altitude source as desired. Kick you off. JTRS off. FC off. And both MFCDs off. That's going to be it for the AHCP. Next, go ahead to the CDU, turn it off, and let me know when you're caught up. Okay, I'm all done with that. Alright, so adjust the seat to the full up position, and if we're good on that 5 minutes below 80% core RPM, we can cut the engine after we go over the last few steps. Cool? Yeah, sounds fine. Okay, just follow along, but don't actually do anything from here on. So after five minutes, we'll pull the left throttle into the cutoff position. And after the left hydraulic pressure bleed off, check for full travel and feel of the ailerons, elevators, and the right rudders. After that, shut down the right motor, and job's done. Sounds easy enough. Right on. Hey, good job today, Kermit. I know you knew a lot of this already, but thanks for indulging me. No problem. Thanks for the refresher and teaching me some of the new stuff. I can't wait to get back up and learn the rest. Should be fun. Oh shit, thanks for reminding me. Speaking of fun, I had a special opportunity come my way. As you know, the 4th of July is in just a few days, and the city of Las Vegas asked Nellis to supply some aircraft for a flyover. 
I like where this is heading. Yeah, so the plan is to launch a couple A-10s around dusk, have them do a nice low flyby over the strip. McCarran's going to keep the airspace clear for us, so it should be damn fun and a pretty special event. If you'd like to fly as my number two for this, let me know, and I'll get you on the schedule. For sure. I'll get back with you in the next day or so on that. Copy. Well, that's it, man. Give it another minute or so and you're cleared to shut down. Roger.